you now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello, friends. We're going to be dealing again with some very, very interesting things today, and we're going to be dealing with the fact that our president spoke to the United Nations his first time. But uh, before we get into that, something happened at the United Nations that Jack spoke about last week, and he said he would be elaborating this week. It's wonderful, but it's pointing to something wonderful. Jack, will you please share? Oh, I have a board member, Roger. Leonard, who called me, and he was really shouting. And I said, what's this all about, Roger? He says, you know, every year the UN takes a new motto for the organization, and the one they chose for 2018 coming up is peace and safety. I said, what? Yeah. you see the minute I'm now on the screen. But you know what? That's one of the last signs in the Bible before Jesus comes. First Thessalonians 5, 3. When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. It's one of the last things that happen, and it's called Armageddon. Revelation 16, 16, the greatest war in history. And we're going to be dealing with that today, too. And ladies and gentlemen, Christ is coming back. And I'm going to show you in the months of April through June that he's coming back. And every sign is already here but two. And when these two are here, it says, it'll be right at the door. You'll not know the day and the hour, but you'll know when it's near even at the door or the knock. It's here. It's happened in our lifetime. We are the generation. And I can hardly wait till next April. Seven one-hour programs. Every sign in the Bible, plus the two that say it could happen at any moment. Mm -hmm. Get ready. Prepare to meet thy God, Amos chapter 4, verse 12. And for you Christians, this is what you should be doing. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus. He's coming. Paul was not able to carry out the message of his coming. What? Read Second Timothy 4, 7. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the day, and not to me only, but to all them also who love his appearing. <laughs> but he was put to death. The Holy Spirit's been speaking to me. He said, you're getting up in age. You'll be 90 in three more years. Don't put it off. You've been called by God, and I've come here to report it to you, to preach the coming of Christ. You're the one chosen. You're God's prophet for the day that the Jesus is coming soon. Don't put it off. You don't know the day and hour. Neither do I. Only the Father knows that. But he said, you will know when it's near even the door. And when these two things happen that you're going to preach this next April through June, that's the generation who will be alive when Jesus comes home. Praise God. He got goose pimples on the duck bumps. Go ahead, honey. Let's go on. All right. When I learned about that, Jack, I called my brother Bob, Bob Shelton. He led me to the Lord, my older brother, and, and he's a, a minister, a great man of God. And when I said that the United Nations wanted two things for this coming year, 2018, peace and safety, he said, What? Peace and safety, Jesus said, when you say, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. So uh, bad things are coming, but Jesus is coming back to stop anything that isn't Amen. according yeah. to his Amen. will, Jack. Well, we're going to go on, and I'd like for you to see a picture of our president going into the United Nations. Trump demands... Make the United Nations great. And I left off again, of course, but I'm glad that he said that. 
At the United Nations, Trump speaks loudly, and Trump takes aim at North Korea. He's not going to back down. He's going to defend our country. And then from the cover of Week magazine, Kim's big move. Why is North Korea escalating his nuclear threat to destroy the United States cities? Why? Kim raises the nuclear stakes again. All right. United Nations okay new sanctions on North Korea. Well, we're saying we've got to do something. We've got to get sanctions so that they won't do what they say they're yes, going to do. This little guy's the biggest maniac alive, and he'll do anything to kill all of us if he can. And Trump says, I'm not going to let it happen. Thank God for a Trump who's willing to protect America and all the nations overseas. And yes. we got some senators and congressmen here are jerks. They don't want to take a stand. But all they can do is make a fool of this man or try to. All right. He's got more brains than all of them put together. Let's go back, please, to the headline here. North Korea warns United States will pay the price for this United Nations sanctions. Well, they're blaming us again and saying we'll do what we want to do. North Korea vows powerful countermeasures to the sanctions. United States cities, its nuclear capabilities in defense against North Korea. And Putin warns North Korea situation on verge of what? Large-scale conflict. Conflict, yes. wow. Putin is entering in North Korea nuclear crisis. Putin warns of planetary catastrophe. That's powerful. Absolutely. He's got a warning. Planetary there. catastrophe. The whole world. And going on, Russia, China launch war games. Well, Russia is entering into this, and China is entering in also. In, in retrograde North Korea, some see a potential precursor of nuclear Iran. Well, you know what? If North Korea can get nuclear weapons, so can Iran. Iran seeks to boost its missile program. Nuclear Iran is the greatest threat to who? Israel. They've got their Boy, that's a Bible prophecy. Israel. Yes, and Trump to decide on a Iran nuclear deal very, very soon. Our president is saying, are we going to go along with the nuclear deal that we have with Iran after the way they are talking? Well, you know, Jack, you've got an awful lot to handle right here. But certainly the Bible doesn't leave us ignorant on anything. Praise the Lord. I started out as a young man at 17 with Billy Graham. And after the service, because I was an accordionist, not a preacher, he said, oh, if I could play accordion like that, I'd quit the ministry. He was just being sweet to sweet, me. Sweet, yes. The years have passed, and I have a framed letter here. And by the way, this world headquarters is going to be open in January for visitors from around the world. Oh, Rick, so yes, that's going to be something. Be and great. you can see the big sign that will be on the front. Jack Van Impey, Living Library and Worldwide Prophecy Center. We've been known for prophecy. I have preached 100 sermons on one-hour videos on prophecy. I've preached 500 one-hour programs when I was on radio on prophecy. I preached 2,300 half-hour programs on 40 years of television. And you know what? I never called myself a prophet. However, since I got this wonderful letter from that dear friend, Dr. Billy Graham, with whom I worked and who opened the doors all across American Canada for Youth for Christ rallies, who got me into the preaching part. And then he wrote this, and it's hanging there in my office in a frame. And if you come to visit us, you can see it. It says, Brother Van Impey. I'm thrilled. And I want you to know that I've been listening to your programs and I am envious of your Bible knowledge. Aww. And Ephesians 4.11 says he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Well, the apostles were just for the formation of the church. After the first century, they were passé. But the prophets continued, but they never... I would call myself that, although everything I've preached from day one is prophecy. 
I am the prophet. And now the Holy Spirit came to tell me so. <laughs> and he says, you got to get the message out. And I will. But you know what? There was the message I preached every single Saturday night. Hundreds of crusades. The coming war with Russia according to the Bible. Where, when, why? Thousands and thousands got saved. Every attendance record was written for every meeting where that was preached. And I'm going to be offering it a couple of weeks from now. The original one from 60 years ago. And you're going to say, that guy was a prophet. Everything he said then is happening right now. I'll give just a little inkling at this moment of what's coming. All right, Jack. With what's happening in North Korea, what's happening in as far as China and Russia and Iran... You, you uh, address this quite often. They're really going to come together, aren't they? And they all hate Israel, so they're going to march down to Israel. I will not get into detailed things now. When you get this video, you're going to be shocked. But the one who's going to lead this war is not North Korea. It's going to be Russia. Right. That's Ezekiel 38 and 39. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog. The land of Magog, the chief prince of Moscow to Volsk. Not. The word chief there is in the Hebrew, Rosh. Russia and Greek, Russian and English. And they are the chief one of the great war that's going to take place at that time. They had it all up. Yes. Wow. And when you see what Russia's doing now and what they've been doing and how they've got their atomic weaponry ready, it's easy to understand. But the armies are also come from the east, and that's Revelation 16, 12. And that includes Japan and North Korea. It's all headed this way. And then you got the word Persia. And that's modern-day Iran because they changed their name from Persia to Iran in 1932. And so you see that entire block aligning itself right now. And when they get together, it's going to be hell let loose on earth. Mm -hmm. But then you have Tarsh and our young lions, and that, of course, is the English-speaking nations. That'll include Ireland. Scotland, Australia, America, Canada, and they too will have their atomic weapons and God help us if we're still here. And we're going to be here, except for one thing, if you're born again Christian, God says, I will keep you from, not through, from, out of, ek, this terrible judgment that's coming on the whole world. So we're going to be on the other side while all this killing and slaughter is going on. And you're going to see that all of these Muslim nations are going to be on the side against Israel because they hate the Jew. I'm talking about the Palestinians, the Taliban, the ISIS crowd, Killing, killing, killing. Oh. Millions are going to die. The Bible predicts that atomic weaponry is going to be used, and here is this little guy there in North Korea testing his missiles. We know that Russia has more missiles than anyone else, and Korean is getting them right now, along with Iran. It's here! That's in that battle. Psalm 97.3, a fire goes before them. Isaiah 66.15, the Lord will come with fire. Ezekiel 20.47, the flaming flame shall not be quenched. Joel 2, verse 3, a fire devours before them. Who those very nations? Zephaniah 1.18, the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. Malachi 4, one. the day cometh that shall burn as in heaven. Revelation 8, 7, a third part of the trees was burned. All green grass was burned. Why? Second Peter 3.10 is the prophecy 
of a weapon that has come into existence for that hour of history, and it's called the atomic bomb. Oh, my. Take my prophecy Bible and turn to the word E for the term elements. It gives the hundred different elements, and many of them are the ones used to make a beach bomb. He says, the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth shall be destroyed. Hmm. Aren't you glad that we've been kept out of it if we're saved? But then guess what? That's the final battle in history. They're still warring. And the Lord Jesus comes back from heaven with his saints. And he says, in my Father's house are many mansions. And he went and he himself prepared him. Jesus. Yeah. And that holy city is 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles long, and 1,500 miles high. He can take care of every human being who's ever been born. Billions of story after story after story. And each story, 1,500 miles wide and long. Wow. And so he comes back and he puts a stop to Armageddon. Amen. Good he Lord. still loves his ancient people, the Jew, and they've all been attacking Israel over and over. It's Israel. World War III. They hate the Jew. But you're not going to get away with it. Russia, mm -hmm. North Korea, China, Iran, all you Islamic terrorists, ISIS, the Taliban, Palestinians. Kill, kill, kill! Here is Sharia law. I study every religion there is. Our Ten Commandments are wonderful. And one of them says, Thou shalt not kill. Right. This has four commandments. Sharia law. Number one, you kill your daughter if she has premarital sex. Number two, you kill all homosexuals. Number three, you kill all apostates. Anyone in your religion who says one word against Muhammad or Allah is dead. Mm -hmm. Number four, you kill all Jews, Christians, and anyone who's not a Muslim. And you know what happens? You get 72 virgins to fulfill all your lustful desires in heaven. And you make a horror house out of God's holy city. That's not the heaven I want to go to. Sharia law. And I'll tell you, it makes me mad when you have articles like you did three years ago all through America. One family, one message. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad. Join us! We're the same religion as Christianity. Bunk! Your Quran says anyone who believes that Jesus is the Son of God will burn in hell forever. Now, if you can say that about my Jesus eight times, I can tell the people the truth about you. Don't try to put me to death. I'll have my videos ready. I get ready. I'm prepared at all times. Amen. And God told me to get these videos done immediately, save them, because the world's going to hear my message starting in April. And before that, I'm going to release my message from 60 years ago. You can see it advertised very soon on YouTube and the rest. The coming war with Russia. I predicted these very things. I'm going to give you a scattering now. Man, where do you hear that? A guy that's just 20 years old. But, oh, I studied. And I'm not trying to brag, but the world gave me 16 doctor's degrees from America and Canada. Rick and I got 20 angels for great television programming. Thank you, Lord. Friends, I'm so happy that Jack gave us that joyous note that Jesus is coming back. He's going to stop all of the terrible things that are going on. Uh, in this world, I've said it time and time again, and I want to say this. We need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Have you put your personal faith in Him? Have you opened your heart to Jesus as your Savior? We don't want to close the program. 
until you make this wonderful prayer, your prayer, a prayer of accepting Jesus as your Savior, Jack. Would you like to lead them in prayer? Amen. Oh, the Bible is so plain, so simple to understand. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved right. eternally. No ifs, ands, or buts. Oh, this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life. Eternal life. And this life is through his son. He died for you. Hanging on that cross, the blood flowed. And without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And you can be cleansed through that precious flowing blood that gave Calvary. All you have to do is ask him to save you, cleanse you. Let's do it right now, Father, in Jesus' name. We're living in perilous hours. The whole thing's about to wind up. Jesus, you're about to appear. But oh, there's hope for all who will open their eyes to see who you are. You're the Son of God, and the Father sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. No one else. So, Jesus, I'm asking you now to be my Savior personally. Come into my heart. I accept you today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, I trust that you prayed that prayer. And if you did, you know what? I would really like to hear from you. And if you will write to us, I would love to tell you also how you can get this wonderful, wonderful Bible. It's terrific. The book of Daniel explained verse by verse. The book of Revelation, verse by verse. It's hard to understand sometimes. But, oh, how wonderful Jack has made it just as simple and plain as can be. So, right to every us. sign coded in yes. color. And then you can look up and see the index, what each colored section stands for. Yes, amen. Oh. So, write to me. I'd like to hear from you saying, I accepted the Lord. Or write to me. I'd like to tell you exactly how you can get this wonderful prophecy Bible. We'll be glad to send it to you in the mail. And I want to leave you with this great thought. The greatest joy on earth is the sure hope of heaven. One day we'll be with the Lord if we have him in our hearts. God bless you. Amen.